A three-man crew from the electric cooperative hit a 24-inch, 250-pound natural gas transmission line. While there was no ignition, the force of the escaping gas blew a crater in the field 10 feet deep and 75 feet in diameter. A 27-year-old apprentice was killed instantly, buried alive along with the trencher. Two men died in this accident. One was working in a trench to install a sewer line to a new business. He was using a jackhammer to break up a piece of concrete partially buried in the bottom of the trench. Unfortunately, it was the top of a cable conduit. They uh, came in contact with a high voltage line of one of the underground feeders, which is uh, 13,200 uh, volts. He struck a power cable and was electrocuted. His boss jumped into the trench to pull him out and was also electrocuted. A third worker also tried to help and suffered serious burns. All I seen was white smoke coming up out of the ground. I jumped down there and I grabbed two brothers up and they took them to the hospital. The line was not marked because they were digging without a one-call ticket. The worst case scenario could be uh, you, you cut the cable, uh, you jump off the machine and you're touching the machine at the same time, you're a direct path to ground. Uh, you're going to be either severely shocked or electrocuted, which is death. There's protective systems on the line, fuses, reclosures, things of that nature, and they don't always go out. Uh, the nick may be something that does just the damage to the cable, and it doesn't see enough fault current to open the line, so the cable could be energized while you're in contact with the machine or the cable itself. In this accident, eight power company workers were injured when a 35,000 volt power cable exploded. The flash from the explosion was hot enough to put second-degree burns on the victims' faces. All were transported to a nearby hospital where five were treated and released. Three were transferred to a burn center where two were treated and released and one was hospitalized. The inferno was 15 feet underground and all the workers had to crawl to safety. For the safety of other people digging around power lines, make sure you use a steel conduit or galvanized conduit. Use gray PVC pipe or use the black armor duct with the red stripe on it. You want to make sure that's identifiable that there's a power line in that ditch. Uh, if you use a green sewer pipe or use a white sewer pipe, and that's something that somebody might be expecting to be a sewer pipe when they cut into it, they could possibly cut into a cable. In excavations where there's more than one power cable or other types of cables such as telecom cables, uh, it's very difficult sometimes to tell which cables are which. You want to make sure you know what cables you're dealing with before you try to cut one of those cables or move one of those cables. A utility contractor augering for a new pole drilled into a 10-inch steel pipeline full of gasoline. After getting his crew away from the equipment and calling 911, the crew foreman watches the gasoline begin to flow down the side of the highway. Shortly after firefighters arrived, a car traveling down the highway and alongside the gasoline turned onto a side road, crossing over the flowing product and igniting over a half mile of the liquid. Smoke on the horizon signals a deadly accident. A worker installing utility poles augured through a liquid propane pipeline and was killed in the ensuing explosion, which sent flames shooting hundreds of feet into the air. Four other workers barely escaped. The explosion was felt for miles, and the flames were so hot that no one could get within several hundred yards of the site. A spokesman for the owner of the pipeline said the drawing showing the line's location had been provided to the power company, which was installing the pole. Gas still burned in the scorched crater eight hours later. Look at the flags, look at the paint marks, look for additional things sticking out of the ground such as transformers, pedestals, even poles with risers on them, meter sets, water pipes, gas meters, things of that nature, uh, fire hydrants. If there's not a mark of paint between those two objects from point A to point B, you may be digging through something that's not marked. Call the utility or your local one call service to get that remarked. Because if you do dig, you may be digging illegally and whatever you cut could be your responsibility. And again, you could be injured or killed if you cut the wrong thing. A 
contractor was putting in an underground electric line and propane line was struck. Two people died and 12 people were injured in a propane explosion. Here's an example where calling one call is simply not enough. The propane lines aren't part of the one call notification system, yet the operator, the operator here who's putting in the electric line, has to deal with these unmarked lines. A crew laying power cable ruptured a gas main just outside the building where over a thousand students were attending class. A gas company locator had met with the power company crew, but there was miscommunication. The locator was told the power cable was to be installed behind the school, so he marked the gas main behind the school and the service lateral going into the back of the building. But the cable was installed in a slightly different position and the crew hit an unmarked segment of the gas main. This accident killed three people and devastated the downtown area of this small town. A worker on a backhoe was digging a trench from the base of a power pole to a building being renovated. He hit a gas line and the leaking gas exploded about 45 minutes later. The worker was killed. A second victim was in one of the buildings that was destroyed. The third victim was a gas company worker responding to a report of the leak. The one call center had not been notified and the backhoe operator was digging without marks. If you haven't called your local one call system for a locate, you're going to be digging illegally. So you want to make sure you've made that call and have the proper marks down and in the proper time frame. You're watching a 14-year-old girl trying to reclaim anything that she might have left after her family's home exploded. A contractor working for the electric utility was drilling underground electric lines. Neighbors had said they smelled gas days before the explosion. The gas company says they had no reports of gas odor complaints. The actual leak was 75 feet from the house. OSHA was investigating the contractor's work in the neighborhood. They believe there may not have been the proper amount of hand digging around the gas line. Again, we want to make sure that you call the one call system first and they will get you hooked up with the uh, facility owner. Uh, you need to remember that uh, Julie or the one call system does not mark the cables. It's up to the facility owner to mark them or to have a contract company mark them for you. Again, if there are no marks, uh, don't dig. Call for another locate. Uh, like I say, if it's a questionable, uh, if you may hit something underground, and there are so many things underground now, it's just about likely you're going to hit something, uh, don't dig. A 36-inch gas transmission line was struck with a one-ton auger by a contract company putting in power poles for an electric cooperative. The one-ton auger was thrown over a hundred yards from the force of the resulting explosion. There were 14 workers on site, eight of them were injured, and there was one fatality, a 45-year-old worker. Some of the workers that got burned in this incident were up to 300 yards away, and the fire consumed 100 acres of land. An electric company worker providing line clearance was situated in a bucket 30 feet in the air. The worker died from burns sustained after an auger, being used to clean out a hole from which a pole was just removed, punctured a plastic gas main. The gas was ignited by sparks generated by overhead power equipment along the aerial electric lines. Location of your emergency. And um, something just blew up across the street from us. This is Louisville 911. This is a gasmic explosion. A power company auguring for installation of a pole struck a four inch gas main. Although residents in the one block area downwind of the broken main were evacuated and the electricity to the area shut off, a 55 year old man in a home 60 feet upwind from the damage was not evacuated. Two and a half hours later, with the gas company at the scene attempting to fix the leak, the man died in an explosion resulting from gas migrating into his residence through the ground. This photo shows the power company's auger still in the ground. This was in town, and the local power company was augering a hole for a pole when they struck a three-quarter inch steel gas service. This gas company responded 
to the accident. There were four workers on site when a home exploded. Parts of the front porch struck a gas company worker, a 53-year-old gas company worker, while standing on front of the property checking for gas levels outside. The worker was killed. Oh no. Hope to God nobody's inside. I know. house just literally blew up. Where are you? Um, South Fork, um, um, apartment complex on Phoenix Drive, New England, New Jersey. There's a fire. All there's right. A fire. There's, there's, there's like gas, there's gas coming, and oh my gosh, the house, there's, there's lots of flames. Okay, Central, we got multiple uh, structures damaged here. We got one structure fully involved, but we're going to need a water supply. You have engine 20, health court 31, engine 32, RIT 22 is on scene, engine 15, engine 21, and engine 53 en route to your location. I'm going to talk to the gas company right now. They're supposedly trying to shut everything off that's underground. Electric and gas and water. Chief, is this gas shut off? Because we still have that burning pretty good on the, the gas. Because we're still here in uh, small explosions inside the building. No, not yet. The electric's been turned off to the complex. The gas hasn't been. Concentrate on the building. Do not put the fire out on the gas. Let the gas main burn. A resident of a condominium complex reported to the electric company that she was experiencing electrical problems inside her unit. Upon inspection, the electric company, which was also the local gas company, determined that the underground electric service to her home needed to be replaced. The utility company assigned this replacement work to its contractor, who notified the state's one call center before it began work. The woman was home on the day the contractor arrived to replace the electric service. While drilling a conduit for the new underground electric service, the contractor struck a two-inch gas main adjacent to the woman's condo. The contractor immediately contacted the utility company to inform the company of the leak. The contractor did not call 911. 45 minutes after arriving on the site, the gas company had not called 911. Approximately one hour after the gas line was struck, a large explosion leveled one end of a structure as utility company personnel were checking gas levels inside. Five utility company workers and two contractor employees were injured in the explosion and resulting fire. The first call made to 911 was to report the explosion. The explosion took the life of the 62-year-old woman whose electrical problem started this deadly series of events.